and all that continues to this very day, made possible through their base of the world's financial elite in the Alps. And when in October 2010, the young Austrian Wolfgang Umfogel, whom you see here, wanted to sell Swiss banking CDs to the IRS, US Internal Revenue Service, and to Germany with black lists, names and accounts concerning the elite's tax evasion into their Swiss base, the Swiss Secret Service of the Octagon arrested him and consequently they suicided the young Austrian. And I mean, he has been suicided in the notorious high security torture detention center of uh, Amthaus Bern, mostly used for regular unwanted immigrants, asylum seekers with not enough money to afford Switzerland and for political prisoners like myself. So me, Sean Ross, contacted the biggest Austrian newspaper, the Kronenzeitung, helped them write an article about it, which they published. And it appeared in that, in that newspaper that the young man was suicided after he had been severely tortured by code O2T torch oxygen deprivation. See the Zurich files in the internet. So here you can read my name here in the, uh, in the newspaper and he was tortured with O2T. So when the 100% corrupt and fascist Swiss authorities read the article on, and on top of that my name in it, the Swiss Octagon sent me an anti-terrorist corps to arrest me, intimidating me and my family by doing an entire grand scale house search, a huge operation of which the mafia should, would be proud. This happens when you criticize the Swiss and their all powerful banks. My arrest got published in the biggest Swiss newspaper called Blick, which I filmed and uploaded on YouTube afterwards. So you can see that here. I became threats from Swiss policemen who were all infected by some weird Swiss fascist ideas. They hit me and incessant arrests wherever I went, putting things together to criminalize me in order to make me shut up and stop me from expressing myself. And I have witnesses and video recordings of that all. But in spite of the obvious range of proofs, the Swiss fascist judiciary just forbid me to talk more about the daily Swiss terror instead, opening all the doors for even more Swiss legal terror. So I refuse to have me silenced up because all I say is the truth. And you can still see on YouTube how the Swiss Nazi police aggresses me and how corrupt Swiss cops hit me and threaten my family. In fact, all I've published on YouTube, I did so under the First Amendment of America and under US law. So in fact, by international standard law, the Swiss fascist judiciary has no jurisdiction at all over what I've published in San Bruno, California. That would be the state court of California responsible for any possible court case and not the banking laws of Switzerland and the Nazi censorship. But Swissy don't care about any law at all. They never did. And they just can do what they want. Now the corrupt Swiss Nazi court of justice is threatening me with even more prison time if I'd reveal the names of those violent, corrupt Swiss cops again. But they're still available in some of my other videos, uh, which even under torture and imprisonment, I didn't take down as they wanted me to do so. Swissy tries to impose the Swiss laws of silence on the US First Amendment. So under this Swiss tyranny, I decided it would be wiser not to go out alone anymore. And I stayed most of the time inside over a period of four long years not going out at all for months in a stretch because there was nobody who wanted to accompany me on a walk outside until again in a large police operation on july 16 2015 the uniformed swiss state nazis kidnapped me in front of my utterly shocked and crying children three and 13 years old against a ransom of 20,000 swiss francs or several years in prison 
So there I stayed for the next three and a half months in several high security torture detention centers, lost more than 30 kilos in three months, until my wife had the rest of the ransom together while making huge debts. Wolfgang Umfogel, the Austrian whistleblower about the Swiss banks, was dead, but I was still alive. And where should I get 20,000 Swiss francs from all of a sudden? You know, the ransom they this criminal organization they, they held me in prison for. I'm not a criminal with lots of money stashed somewhere. In fact, the Swiss Nazi police and their judiciary are a terrorist organization who kidnap people for ransom only for expressing themselves about things they don't want you to say, nor even think. Thought crime, they call this. Today, we see all over Europe a dangerous tendency rising of Nazi organizations like the Swiss SV SVP, the French Front National or the German NPD. Call their members after Swiss example to join the police. The army fascist or the army or fascist student organizations. And finally, the Justice Department and politics. And in Switzerland, we're back in Nazi Germany in 1933 already since quite a while. For all these organized Swiss crimes against me and my family, Swiss crimes against Europe, Swiss crimes against humanity, and for these indescribable, indescribable Swiss crimes against the Jewish people, as Swiss Nazi Templars organized the Holocaust and the Second World War, for all this, I would like to make an official complaint somewhere. And for all I talk here, I have documentaries on my YouTube channel, Gure and Chatse Frats, like the murder on the French minister, Robert Boulin, 30 years ago, organized by the Swiss Octogon Nazi Templars, about the poisoning of the entire French town, Le Pont Saint-Esprit, leaving several dead. So the Swiss could better sell their LSD to the CIA MK Ultra monarch with CIA director Alan Dulles and J. Edgar Hoover of the FBI, both of Swiss descent. Hoover's real name was Huber. There are currently one million Swiss Americans in the US on all key positions. US presidents Eisenhower, Trump, Barack Obama and Herbert Hoover real name Huber, just like J. Edgar Hoover, all Swiss. So here's the American Swiss foundations, and there are many, you know, officially here you see of the, by the Swiss state in this article, and there are many, many more articles in the uh, internet where you can, in this article you can read, there are one million Swiss Americans in the US. And this is official, it's by the Swiss states. You see the Templars logo here. And it starts here with dear young leaders. So they are the, um, it's, it's addressed to the Swiss Americans. They are leading America. So this guy is one of the uh, seven heads of state, like in the revelations of John, the seven heads. Switzerland has seven heads. And they talk about America and Switzerland like sister republics. You remember I told you about the sisters of Isis? Well, there you go. One million Swiss Americans. And there are 600 Swiss companies in the US who create half a million jobs. Well, guess who is working there, eh, Swissy? There's a lot more in this article. Um, but I'm not even going to read it all. So there's a lot of, about Swiss Americans in the internet. You just punch Swiss Americans and there's a lot, you know, this and that. So here there's some Swiss Americans in Wikipedia, Barack Obama, Herbert Hoover, Dwight D. Eisenhower, hey Swissy, J. Edgar Hoover, oh, they all, they all here. And there are many, 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 many more. You know, Trump is one of them, eh? So just find it out yourself. You've been taken over. So here's a picture of one of my uh, videos. You see how they look alike? Look at the mouth, look at the eyes, the nose. You know, they are the same. It's the same people who rule over the US. Both of these people, their names were Huber. You know, look at the eyebrows. It's, it's just, they are the same. Look at the nose where, you know, the eyes and they are the same. President Herbert Hoover, 
J. Edgar Hoover, and they were both in office when the Wall Street crash happened, when they stole your money, eh? You understand? So here's part of the title of that film. Uh, it's everywhere on websites. And even Obama has Swiss roots from Reed Kertzers, the canton of Bern. Erich Honecker, originally written with double G like Egger, as in Schwarzenegger. This criminal president and head of the Stasi from Eastern Germany, also Swiss, from the Swiss Palatines or Saarländische Schweiz. The Palatines or the uh, Palatinate, they are in the, uh, the south of Germany, next to Switzerland, where Trump's ancestors, Obama, Boris Johnson, Honecker, where they all came from, who are actually ethnic Swiss. So here you can read about the Palatinate and the Palatines in southern Germany. And also Donald Trump's ancestors are from the Swiss Palatines from a town called Karlstadt in Germany where the Swiss after the 30 year war massively emigrated in empty southern Germany, where from 1618 to 1648, the entire German population vanished, murdered by the notorious Swiss mercenaries under Templar command, with two thirds of the original German population dead. This time a Swiss genocide on the Germans. And when in 19, 29, the Swiss Herbert Hoover, real name Huber, became US president. The Swiss, their banks, and all their Swiss US sleeper agents on all key positions, and their, all their Hubers on all key positions, with their head of the FBI, Gay Edgar Hoover Huber. Immediately afterwards, a few months later, provoked the American Wall Street crash on the stock exchange to be able to steal all the savings of simple and honest Americans. So especially for this occasion, it needed a world central bank and for all the central banks in the world in order to transfer the theft of the century from the US central bank, the Federal Reserve into Switzerland to finance Hitler's war industry with that. So, the Swiss founded the BIS, or Bank of International Settlements in Basel, right at the German border and next to the Basel railway station. <laughs> Quite practical. So, Jalmar Schacht, Hitler's banker, 33 degree Freemason and an aristocrat, became its first bank managing director. It was Hitler's banker. Only so, the impossible and incredible rise of the German war industry and its financing can be explained right after a very bad and very long economical depression, severe economic crisis with, short f with food shortage and starvation in Germany. This is what John F. Kennedy meant in his speech against the secret pharaonic Swiss Nazi Templars in the US of April 27th in 1961, which starts as follows. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned. No rumor is printed. No secret is revealed. For we are opposed around the world by a monolith, monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies on covert means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. Switzerland. One million Swiss Americans on all key positions in the US. Soon after this speech, he was dead. Octogon of the Swiss Nazi Templars killed him. At least since 1923, Hitler visited Switzerland. Now and then, where the Swiss general Ulrich Wille 
and branch of the German high aristocracy invited him in Zurich, Switzerland, to finance him. Through Rudolf Hess, the second man in the Third Reich, who studied at the ETH Technical University of Zurich. Hess was even born in Alexandria, Egypt. Not talking about pharaohs. So here you can see Mr. Hitler in Zurich, Switzerland, with Swiss policemen and Swiss army guys like here and then here. So here on the picture, when Hitler was in Zurich in 1923, you definitely see the guy having a, uh, a gun in his pocket. And the Swiss policeman here, well, he doesn't care because they're all into it. And the Swiss of the Octogon Nazi Templars financed the Nazis on condition to murder all the Jews of Europe once and for all and to destroy Germany. Because of two main reasons, the Jews should be annihilated and disappear from the face of the earth. First, before, because they formed a patriarchal society, which the sisters of Isis and their lesbians hate most. And second, for creating a society within the society, completely isolated and out of control of the still pharaonic nobility. Like three million Jews in Poland without speaking Polish, just living in a big kibbutz for themselves. And Pharaoh doesn't like that, having no control and no taxes to pay. This is why the Swiss agent Adolf Hitler wrote in his book Mein Kampf that the Jews had organized the First World War through the notorious and elusive Jewish finance. A stupid Swiss lie by the Swiss bankers of Octagon because anyone can see that Europe's entire high aristocracy pushed us into that war. Here, the German Emperor William II and grandson of English Queen Victoria is all one big family. They put on a uniform and a helmet with a little obelisk on top and said, now there is war and who refuses gets shot. You see, Templar symbol here, Templar symbol here, Templar's cross, skull and bones of the Freemasons. Well, you still get any doubt who the Freemasons are? Well, here you see the two pharaohs of Germany and the pharaoh of Austria together. The Emperor Franz Josef from Austria, he put on a uniform and a helmet. Now there is war. And this is why Swissy had to murder Empress Sissy backwards for Isis in Geneva, Switzerland, just before the war, because she was an active pacifist and anti-militarist. Here in my video, Swissy killed Sissy. The uh, King of Italy, uniform helmet on, now it's war. And look at all the medals. Whoa, he must have been a brave man. Look at it. And look at it. He's saluting in a uniform. What a brave man. The Tsar of Russia and King of England, same thing. They all put on a uniform and Europe's entire nobility ordained the people of Europe to the big dying. I'm sorry, no Jews in responsible for that one. So, you see... The English king, uh, you know, they look the same. They are cousins. They look exactly the same. Um, yo, look at what a, all the octagons here. What a brave man. Look, this, this battle here and a battle here. Wow, he risked his life and all that. And look at this one here. Wow, so brave. You know, they give a good example. So we follow that, eh? Yeah, you can read it with me. At the time of World War I, the King of Britain, Russia and Germany were all first cousins. When asked about World War I, Kaiser Wilhelm of Germany sarcastically remarked, If my grandmother, Queen Victoria, had been alive, she would never have allowed it. This is the First World War. We died, millions of us. Hey, Mr. Hitler, where are the Jews then? Hey, Swissy, you liars. It was, as always, the aristocracy and nobility behind all the wars and two world wars. And this is why Hitler always had a painting of German Emperor Frederick the Great with him, also called 
Fritz the faggot by the people for his bad taste of seducing young soldiers, leaving them no other choice, really. Here you see the, uh, the office, the bureau of Mr. Hitler with a painting of um, his ancestor, there's no doubt, Frederick the Great. And Hitler was also obsessed with Pharaoh Nefertiti. Well, both his ancestor, of course, as the nobility, nobility comes from Pharaoh. As Führer almost sounds like Pharaoh. Führer, Pharaoh. Führer, Pharaoh. Now look at the pin he's got on his tie. You know, the wings there is from Ma'at. The, um, the wings of Ma'at. It's all Pharaoh. Officially, there currently are 100,000 aristocrats in Germany alone, with millions of descendants and half-breeds in all key positions. And look at the bent necks of both of them. It's the same bloodline. They have got bent necks and, and bent bodies because of the, um, the inbreeding. Look how she's looking. You know what she's thinking. It's same. Hello, Granny. So here's another film of mine in which I explain a lot more about it. You see the obelisk. And here is was uh, Hitler was sworn into the uh, chancellor. And that is why the Reichstag was set on fire. Because Hitler wanted to be sworn in for German Chancellor in Potsdam. So this is in Potsdam. And seat of the Sans Souci Castle, which is just around the corner. And the Sans Souci Castle, and here in Potsdam, it's in front of the obelisk and the Garnison's church, with the coffin of Frederick the Great, right? Fritz the Faggot. It's in it and not he didn't want to be sworn in in the german parliament or a reichstag more or less which is a symbol of the german people and the idea of democracy well the idea of democracy in theory only of course but as the, as they're all aristocrats and nobility and pharaohs it has to be done next to a castle so and, and next to next to an obelisk it's full of obelisks there Potsdam is the seat of the German emperors in Prussia. And um, this is why they uh, set fire to the Reichstag. There's no other reason. So every time when you see here this, the, the YouTube uh, signs here and the title like under it and here the, the YouTube make it bigger, you know, um, then you know it's uh, I, I make a, 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 a reference to one of my YouTube videos which I already made uh, on the subject. If, if I wouldn't do it like this, um, the, the whole film here would take 10 hours or 20 hours, you know. And um, so the best thing is if you see it, just pause it, write down the title and then look at the, these videos here afterwards. I say it only one time here and th there were quite a few videos already which I made a reference to uh, before, so. Yeah, so after financing Hitler by the Octagon of the Alps, the Swiss put all their men on all key positions and all on all leading officers of the Nazi dictatorship, like the Reichs Health Minister of the Third Reich, the SS Obergruppenführer, an SS general, the Dr. Leonardo Conti, you can see him here, with the nickname the Swiss Sadist because he initiated the T4 or Tiergarten 4 program enabling medical experiments on humans, doing so on about half a million persons, using them as guinea pigs. And even the Germans were afraid of him, because, and he was born in Tessin, Switzerland, like the family of French Prime Minister Manuel Valls from his mother's side. So here's another of my videos on YouTube about Mengele here. So write down the title and um, uh, so you can watch it afterwards. It, it's much more thorough. Uh, you have to excuse me because I don't have a home and I have no more time um, to do it all here. So the Swiss Minister of Health in the Third Reich Consequently, was the direct superior of the notorious camp doctor of Auschwitz, Dr. Joseph Mengele, who was himself an ethnic Swiss. After the war, the war protected by the Swiss authorities, 
Wall knew he lived in the Schwimmbadstraße number no. nine in Kloten, Zurich, practically near to the biggest airport in Switzerland for his many travels to South America. And every year Mengele nicknamed the Angel of Death when skiing with his son Rolf in a Swiss holiday resort called Angel's Mountain or Engelsberg in the Hotel Engel or Angel while son Rolf attended the world's richest and most famous boarding school for Pharaoh's elite in Montreux, Switzerland. During his Swiss years, Mengele was directly involved in the forced mass sterilization after the war in Switzerland of 40,000 gypsy women rounded up in the 50s, 60s and 70s, a thing the Nazis called the gypsy question. Was in fact Mengele's primary assignment in Auschwitz to experiment on gypsies by sterilizing them with high radiation output of x-rays before getting famous through torturous experiments on twins and small Jewish children. After the war, the police chief commissioner of Bern, Switzerland, Dr. Heinrich Rotmund, gave to all these Swiss and ethnic Swiss Nazi war criminals a Swiss Red Cross pass to go to Argentina, like Mengele, Klaus Barbie, head of the Gestapo in Lyon, France, nicknamed the Butcher of Lyon, who later on worked for the secret police of Bolivia and helped torturing Che Guevara before killing the Cuban revolutionary. Of course, Adolf Eichmann also got a Red Cross pass and with that tens of thousands of Swiss Nazi Templar war criminals furnished with documents from the motherland in the Alps for the notorious Nazi red line into never seen again. The SS Standardenführer, so SS Colonel Karl Jäger, was born in Schaffhausen, Switzerland and he was the head of the SS Einsatzgruppen who like a wave after the first wave of war machinery of the Wehrmacht, army troops, and army troops and Luftwaffe, Air Force, simply erased the civilian population of Western Russia like a horde of machine-like serial killers. Like a real Swiss banker, Swiss Karl Jäger, he wrote all the numbers down in a to be proud of logbook, the notorious Jäger report. And his name Jäger, literally meaning the hunter, of how they manually liquidated 400,000 Jews in the sand, in the sand pits of which 32,000 children, all handwork. 32,000 children manually. Well, only Swiss you can do that. In 1941, Switzerland officially financed Operation Barbarossa the German offensive against Russia with 1 billion Swiss francs. 1941 value, thus financing officially the genocides against the Jews and the Russians by Switzerland. 1 billion in those days are at least a trillion of today's Swiss francs. Therefore, the Swiss still today call Germany the big canton. And on February 23rd, 1937 Adolf Hitler guarantees the neutrality of Switzerland so this article is in WDR which is a, a big uh, German um, a broadcast and um, official also Holocaust trains from Italy to Germany passed through Switzerland and on February 23rd 1937 Hitler openly and officially guaranteed the Swiss neutrality to his finances and the link of this article you can find in this film in the description. Thankfully to their finances, the Nazis even had a Swiss cross on their tanks in the beginning of the war. And there even might have been full Swiss tank panzer divisions, which Swissy later on managed to hide by camouflaging a Teutonic black cross on top of the Swiss cross. Thus, getting the military logo of the Wehrmacht German army from the big canton and both parts of that logo derive from the Knights Templars, both the Swiss cross as well as the Teutonic cross. 
for the Nazis to invade Poland instead of Switzerland is like living next to the central bank but rob the snack bar next to it. What Nazis in fact repeated not long time ago when the German NSU Nationalsozialistischer Untergrund robbed Turkish and Muslim snack bars and killing the owners with it using of course Swiss special weapons bought and suppressed in Switzerland. Also widely known how German neo-Nazis undisturbed practice shooting in Switzerland. So instead of doing something against that all, the Swiss and their ETH Rudolf Hess school in Zurich published an official report for the German authorities in 2018 that foreigners and immigrants are responsible for all the crimes in Germany. Say what? You got it, Swissy just tries to stir up hatred and racism, just like in 1923 when Adolf, Adolf got invited in Switzerland. And it says in this article, how is it possible that a Swiss institute makes a study about crime of immigrants and uh, of a whole for Germany, officially, how is this possible? The sly Swiss still pretend that they had to behave like they did during World War II. They were pushed like, because they were afraid of the Germans. Can you believe that? Look how they're all smiling here at the border. At the left side the Germans and the right side the Swiss. They're all smiling, having a nice chat together. Here again you can see them nicely chatting together and smiling, both of them. To the left a German soldier and to the right a Swiss uh, soldier. And simultaneously they say that the victorious Swiss army could never be defeated with all their cannons in the mountains. Problem is that only 5% of the Swiss population lives there and 95% in flat or slightly hilly terrain, easily accessible for armies and that Swissy only had 50 tanks. Whereas, whereas the Jerry's 27,000 over the whole war and only 450,000 Swiss men under arms against 18 million crowds. Technically speaking, one could have left those dug in Swissy with their formidable cannons just there by themselves up the mountains. Why bother? Sometime sooner or later, they would have come down all by themselves out of hunger and nothing to do anyway. Hitler apparently once said, if I want, I can take Swissyland with the Berlin Fire Department. Then there was Hitler's mastermind for genocide and worldwide father of eugenics, the Swiss doctor Ernst Rudin, born in St. Gallen, Switzerland. And just like Dr. Mengele, an ethnic Swiss, so was his military chief and co commander of Auschwitz, Rudolf Huss, another ethnic Swiss, who even spoke Swiss German in Auschwitz. Just like the commandant of the first extermination camp, Zobibor, the SS Sturmbahnführer Christian Wert, nicknamed Christian the Terrible, also an ethnic Swiss. Further ethnic Swiss were Julius Streicher, the publisher of the anti Semitic magazine Der Stürmer, the Stormtrooper, that just as the French Charlie Hebdo depicts other people, races, and religions as animals, as the Swiss SVP Nazi Party performs today in the streets of Switzerland. The head of the SS, Heinrich Himmler, another ethnic Swiss, and there were many, many more on all key positions of the Third Reich. So here you can see Mr. Hitler, Mr. Himmler, he's uh, standing at the Swiss border and he's smiling. I had a good film about him, but uh, Swiss, he managed to take it off. I can't find it anymore. I'll do it again one day. This is how the Swiss make Nazism legal. This is what Swiss he taught the Germans then. And this is what's happening in Switzerland today by making persecution, racial profiling, terror on entire families, torture and murder official and legal by taking over the executive, put on a police uniform, army, justice department, lawyers, you name it. And Swiss is even exporting the modus operandi all over Europe by means of Swiss fascist speakers 
knotting ties to the worldwide family of haters finding their destiny in Nazism again. And in Switzerland, this was never finished. And there are quite a few people in Switzerland with the name of uh, Himmler. So what is an ethnic Swiss? During the 30 year war from 1618 to 1648, about 100,000 Swiss mercenaries called Reisläufer and under Templar's command murdered about 20 million Germans and their children. About two thirds of the German population in those days perished in this genocide on the German people. Whole German towns disappeared from the face of the earth and Swiss mercenaries told the other Swiss back home, the land is free, you can all settle down there. In the south of Germany, in Baden-Württemberg, big parts of Bavaria, Vorarlberg in Austria, Alsace in France and northern Italy are all what is called ethnic Swiss. Those who replaced the indigenous local population of this area because of the 30 year war. And whereas being spoken now an Alemannic dialect like in Switzerland, these in fact are ethnic Swiss from where most of the Nazi leaders, Nazi elite and Nazi war criminals came from. They were all ethnic Swiss or even born in Switzerland, the motherland itself. And in the still Gallo-Roman, now French Alsace, the Swiss mercenaries massacred 95% of the indigenous population. That's why the word, the word Alsace, etymolog etymologically from Al Swiss, all Swiss. That's the reason that Alsatians neither like the Germans nor the French because they are Swiss. So this is that French part, it's called Alsace. They're all Swiss and they speak Swiss and they think Swiss. Because of the former mentioned re reasons, these regions close to Switzerland are the richest in Germany, France, Austria and Italy. In 2014, articles were published in big European newspapers that Switzerland actually wanted to form a great Swiss empire with southern Germany, West Austria, Alsace and northern Italy to reunite all the ethnic Swiss back into the Reich under one roof, the empire of great Switzerland. Throughout history, this has well functioned as a buffer zone around Switzerland to better protect the motherland and central base. Uh, the Shoah, Holocaust and the Second World War have been organized and executed 100% by the Swiss. By the way, I also lost my grandfather in 1942 because of the Nazis. He was an officer in the Royal Navy, something to do with intelligence, which they call naval intelligence nowadays nowadays and not, and i'm not jewish at all so here you can see them standing together again here with the swiss cross a swiss soldier with the swiss helmet and here the uh, german soldier with their symbol there they're just chatting together you know pausing for a picture together and as the french they didn't i put i did three complaints uh in france against the state of switzerland i never even got a, re a reply so I would like to make a complaint in the US Court of Justice against the Swiss state for 50 million fold murder premeditated for the Holocaust and for planning the Second World War, plus two genocides on the German people, one during the 30 year war and one during World War Two. A complaint for all the Swiss crimes against humanity and the already mentioned crimes against me and my family shown in this YouTube film the Swiss beast, the devil, the devil's own base. In the book of Revelation from the Bible, it says the beast had seven heads and 10 horns. Well, Switzerland is the only state in the world with seven heads, whom they call the seven federal councillors, who additionally share 10 ministry amongst each other, the 10 horns on which they take us on metaphysically seen. So seven is also the holy number of the pyramid as in the square and compass. And all nations on earth have traded with this whore of Babylon called the sisters of Isis, Suis, 
All nations have traded with the Swiss Templar banks, the first in the world, out of whom all the world's banks come from. Bergdorf in Switzerland is without any doubt the cradle of modern Nazism and up to the new age the centre of world Nazism because in the 18th century the Duke Hartwig von Hundradowski lived there, another one of those pharaonic aristocrats, and he really was a great source of inspiration for the young Hitler through his books and magazines, who helped forming Hitler's attitude from a very early age on that it would be a lot better to, to eradicate all the Jews from the planet once and for all. And always it all comes out of Switzerland, even up to the terrorist attacks of Paris, Nice and Berlin in 2015 and 2016. When the Swiss fascist mafia kidnapped me in 2015 against a ransom of 20,000 Swiss francs because of my historical documentaries like Auschwitz made in Switzerland and other about the Swiss respon responsibility concerning the Shoah and the Second World War, Octogon held me hostage in the torture detention center of Bergdorf and also the cradle of modern fascism by the Duke Hartwig von Hund Radowski. As in the cell next to me, there was this Swiss neo-Nazi from Bergdorf itself, with a very light sentence of just a couple of months because of his committed bomb attacks with <coughs> explosives on asylum seeker centers, as there were also immigrants on the same ward with very heavy sentences of several years because of nothing at all. The Swiss neo-Nazi had tattoos over his entire body with charming slogans like Six millions are not enough, making it clear to me he had read the works of the Duke from Bergdorf from his hometown. He had an enormous tattoo of a swastika over his entire face. I can still see the enormous swastika deforming under the grim expression he pulled when I said to him, now, with all those tattoos, you've turned into a colored man, mate. And as Swissies are as cold as reptilians, I couldn't really see if he valid my British sense of humor, or maybe not that much. There were also prison guards with so Nazi-style tattoos of their typical typography letter style in their necks, who always behaved in a good mood like old pals with the tattooed neo-Nazi prisoner whereas towards us immigrants and foreigners being full of Swiss hatred in this Bergdorf Nazi center prison. One should distinguish two types of Nazism, the poor man's Nazism and Nazism by the rich, which seems to be a paradox and they are in fact two totally different things. Nazism of the poor is very visible and very loud with the right hand that wants to go up all the time skinhead like a pharaoh, whereas real Germanic should in fact be long-haired. The tribu tribal Nazism show their hatred at any suitable, mostly unsuitable occasion, not really gifted with too large intelligence in the style of their supposedly superiority and mostly out of the working class and forced to live next door to those immigrants out of the category less desired neighbors. This model in fact is rather rare in Switzerland, the, the land per definition Nazism for the rich, Swiss banks and Swiss industrialists acting secretly, invisible and highly organized. And it's always Nazism for the, of the rich trying to mobilize Nazism of the poor, of course for their own cause only and never the other way around. The sort of Le Pen of the National Front in France, billionaire, lawyers, both father and daughter, and clearly visible in my videos with a Swiss flag in their hands. And they always try to mobilize the Nazism of the poor for their own interests, traditionally rather busy to enrich themselves through the cause and during a, a war hiding it all in Switzerland, their octagon base just like, in fact, the Nazis did during World War II. And after the war, when Nazism of the rich has filled their pockets and vaults in safe Switzerland, they let the people and Nazism of the poor 
fall, left in poverty, hunger, and total destruction. Just as after World War II, the Crusades, and the next big war coming up, the Nazis and the Swiss, therefore, have won the war, while the Germans lost the war. And by the end of the war in 1945, in a hotel Maison Rouge, or Red House Hotel, which you can see here, at the Kleber Square in Strasbourg, France, a French secret agent of the uh, second bureau, Le Deuxième Bureau, furnished the last official witness account on the elusive octagon ever since. And remember what I told you about the pharaonic red house. But he said he didn't understand why the name octagon, octagon, yeah? I do know why and will reveal that to you here. If you draw a line around a Swiss cross or a Templar's cross, you get eight lines forming an octagon. When being an archaeologist or historian like myself, you know that the Knights Templars almost always built their temples, chapels, churches and castles in an octagonal form. And that's exactly the reason that Hitler's eagle, eagle's nest, now called Kirsteinhaus, of the Führer or leader of the Nazi Templars was built in an octagonal form for the very same reasons. So, because of these Nazis of the elite, this is why the Swiss Nazism of the rich have sentenced the young tattooed neo-Nazi to a very light prison sentence, because within the elapse of a very overseeable future, his questionable qualities could become effectively useful. Until that moment of glory, he will be incarcerated for a very short time, together locked in close proximity with those immigrants whom he favours so very much, so as to say increase his qualities in service of the Nazism of the rich. It is therefore because of this all that there were every time false flag terrorist attacks in France, just before some important elections and even before the 2017 presidential elections to steer the public opinion towards Le Pen for president like the terrorist attacks in Paris on Friday the 13th, 2015, and those earlier that year against Charlie Hebdo, every single time just before some political elections in France. Not even the bodies of those so-called Arabic attackers they were able to show us. On the contrary, instead of that, serious witnesses in very big English-speaking newspapers, as here in the mirror of November 14, 2015, who saw white men with blue eyes. Well, the thing with the blue eyes, actually, they took it out of the article. Uh, they were looking very muscular, Navy SEAL-like, and moved very military trained and in disciplined manners. Yeah, it says the shooter was white. There were white, white men, like Navy SEALs. And before, it definitely said he had blue eyes, but they took that out. So here's some more of that witness account. You know, they're just cool after the shooting. They killed a lot of people. They look like soldiers or, milit or military, you know, mercenaries. And uh, very muscular. Well, read it yourself. Well, this is Octogon, no doubt. There were also witness accounts in the media seeing a second group of men who just stood there with their Kalashnikovs after the attack apparently not knowing anymore what to do, mission accomplished, and nothing more in the hard disk. And exactly like this it was. There were two groups of men. One group of military drilled men from Octagon, who had put the second group in place. The second group consisted of brainwashed Arab pity criminals, and when the program by the CIA MKUltra had ended, they just stood there without knowing what to do next, nor how they got there. It was so in Paris and even more obvious in Nice on July 14, 2016, when the Arab lorry driver was just senselessly sitting in the driver's cabin when the surrounded police just executed the absent-spirited man in order to do away all possible evidence 
in spite of the obvious fact that the terrorists caught alive would be worth a, su a substantial lot more. I was in Nice that day and saw a huge police exercise with at least 20 huge police vans before the attack. And this practice has been witnessed just before all the terrorist attacks we had since 9-11. So the authorities in all tranquility can prepare the attack. How does it work such a brainwash and how did they do it? It started in 1951 when the Swiss poisoned the entire French town of Pont Saint-Esprit with LSD in the flour for the local bakeries to convince the CIA that LSD is a good thing to use for the MK Ultra a monarch brain control program. Because exactly during this time the Cold War had started and it needed a valid product to extract intel out of a KGB agent. The Swiss and the biggest chemical plants in the world, now Novartis, the biggest chemical company in the world, had invested a lot of time and money to develop their product called LSD by Albert Hoffmann. Just a few years before in 1949 and couldn't find a market for it. The inhabitants of Le Pont Saint-Esprit went entirely bunkers, like an end time scenario transcended from the heavens. An, elf, an 11 year old strangled his grandmother, people thought being an airplane and jumped down from the third floor. Others saw snakes crawling out of their bellies. Hundreds ended their days in the boogie house and many died. Nice sample, said the CIA, their Swiss director Alan Dulles and Swiss US President Eisenhower. We buy it. Yes, there are currently more than 1 million Swiss Americans who totally undermined the USA. The Arab terrorists from Paris and Nice were all, and each one of them, small criminals, who in the night were extracted out of their cells in prison, so their fellow inmates didn't notice a thing. Then they were tied up upon a special stretcher in a clinic, Swiss LSD administered and heavily tortured. It hurts like hell and you want to run away, but you can't, because hands, feet, legs and body are strapped to the stretcher. So you run there, where you still can, in your head. One literally turns crazy for pain and a breach is open, a barrier sur surpassed through which the consciousness slips through into a new world where you've never been before. A new personality and a new identity gets created, like in a schizophrenia. Through the terrible pains, the old personality gets blocked out, because it's too painful to be there. Consequently, like a new blank page or empty memory SD card, one can fill in the new program, whatever you want. Then the subject gets a video headset on, which shows for weeks a bearded Muslim in Paris who empties his Kalashnikov. When finished with the subject, he only knows to do that, what's in the new memory card, and when he's finished and mission accomplished, he will be just standing there like a zombie, because there's nothing more in the hard disk. Then some spec op guys come to transform the defenseless subject into a Swiss cheese with a heavy lead poisoning. So, for not hitting their side, in Paris only left-wing objectives were targeted. Charlie Hebdo, a Bataclan rock concert for youngsters with long hair smoking weed, target the people in a soccer stadium, in Nice, children, and 50% um, of the people mowed down were Arabs, and some families on a Christmas market in Berlin, no objective of the right or the elite was hit, neither the authorities nor the McDonald's where the attackers ran past, clearly octagon of the Nazi Templars of the Alps behind the attacks, doing, which we call in the army slang, soft targets, a real speciality of the Swiss, always taking soft targets like my family. Always in recent history, all the attacks of which left wing was accused were in the end done by right wing groups. It's a tradition that continues. 
the Munich bombing of 1980 and 13 dead. First, the RAF, a German left-wing Baader-Meinhof terrorist accused, in reality, a German neo-Nazi group ordered by Gladio, who did it. And Gladio is a octagon branch. Bologna, Italy, also 1980 and 85 dead. Not Brigato Rosa, but also by Gladio. And in Belgium in the 80s, with 85 dead, not Action Direct, left-wingers, but again Gladio of the Swiss Octogon. I know that Octogon are behind it, because I was there, when America's and Europe's future were discussed by Octogon and the Swiss industrials. And I am willing to give names, but I need some kind of protection. From all the unknown information presented here, Logically, one has to draw the conclusion that one cannot just know all this without having been initiated in it all. This is why I spent five and a half years in Swiss prisons as a political prisoner, because I expressed myself about things the Swiss laws of silence do not allow to be spoken of. The Swiss police and judiciary are in fact a terrorist organization for Octogon who kidnap people against a ransom of 20,000 Swiss francs, only because I express myself about things they don't want to hear. In Switzerland, giving one's opinion is a capital crime worth torture and persecution. And in this land, in the Alps, they foster a very long tradition of hatred, racism, anti-Semitism, etc. against everyone who is not Swiss and does not comply with the accustomed model. So, at the very same moment when the Duke Hartwig von Hundradowski from Bergdorf, Switzerland, and base of hardcore Nazism, publishes anti Semitic theses into the 18th century and later read by Hitler and the rest of the Nazis, the Swiss state officially ordered new Jew laws in 1776, the same year as the US independence and birth of the Illuminati that the combined jury of Switzerland could only live in the confined ghettos of Endingen and Lengnau, in the north of Switzerland, near the German border, in the hope that they would all disappear into Germany, which they finally did, because a few years later there wasn't a single Jew left in Switzerland. Switzerland was Judenfrei. They had all left Switzerland and chased away by Swissy. Same thing, the Swiss with their terror towards others have done with me now. And it goes on this thousand year Swiss tradition against everything what's different, with Muslims as today's Jews, the anti-Islam concentration camps ready for use. Already in the Middle Ages in Switzerland, the Swiss state had already forced the Jews to always have a yellow circle sewn in onto the jacket together worn with the so-called Jew hat, a long yellow hat and prefixed form, almost like the typical sorcerer's hat. Therefore, it didn't really come by surprise that the Swiss state already before the war forced all the Jews to have a J stamp in their passports, a big capital letter J for a Jude in it, in order to categorize them like cattle, plus the mandatory name David in front of their actual names for man and Sarah for women, all in the same pass and identity cards, which the Nazis in Germany thought a splendid idea, thus coming up with the yellow star. And in fact, Solomon's seal, a Jewish king of Pharaoh's descent, also called David's star, who, was, who also was a king. So that's the star of David, or Solomon's seal, it's a pharaonic symbol. It has nothing to do with the Jews, actually, which the Orthodox Jews uh, will agree with me. They know it too. Yes, in Switzerland, all that's not forbidden is compulsory. Even the slave ships going to the Americas belong to the Swiss. Watch this film here. The KKK Ku Klux Klan was founded by the Swiss and has a logo of a white cross on a red underground, the flag of Switzerland. And officially, the KKK is the official slogan of the Swiss Parliament for consensus, compromise, concordance. 
all written with a K in German, meaning we in Switzerland don't make any compromises, no consensuses, and no concordances. The Lockerbie bombing was orchestrated by the Swiss and their Mabo company of Zurich. See this film. And the terrorist attack of Tunisia in 2015 were provoked by the Swiss fascist police of Zurich. The proofs of all that are in my English videos about that. Octogon's Swiss grey eminence François Genoux was a personal friend of Adolf Hitler. And of Amin al husseini the Mufti of Jerusalem, the uncle of Yasser Arafat, the PLO leader, and leader of two Muslim SS division. He was a general in the, in the Nazi army. And they were the largest, largest SS divisions in the Third Reich, who, with the help of Hitler and the Swiss, waged a real jihad in the Balkans, in Europe, against Serbs, Jews and Gypsies, murdering about 400,000 men, women and children. Most of all, in the terrible camp of Jasenovac, where the river next to it turned literally red because of the spilled blood in it, the blood of jihad in Europe, enabled by the Nazi Templars, who had an, an alliance with Saladin. Remember, an alliance with Saladin. Talking about death camps, the Swiss had even death camps in the U.S., murdering and torturing many Americans just 200 years ago, done so by Swiss captain. Heinrich Wertz, who changed his name into Henry, and who was a doctor, just like the Swiss sadist and Swiss Nazi Minister of Health in the Third Reich. After the war, the Swiss Genoux found a lawyer for Klaus Barbie, the butcher of Lyon, who was even taken into the US with the paperclip um, operation. And he found a lawyer for Adolf Eichmann and many other Nazi war criminals. Together with one of Octogon's other grey eminences, Hans Huber Ahmed al Swissri, they founded the Swiss bank Al Taqwa to better finance the Islamo fascism with which they'd infected Islam with Mein Kampf propaganda and to finance the left wing terrorism of the 60s and 70s, who, on top of that, were trained by the East German Stasi led for 30 years by the ethnic Swiss Erich Honecker from the Swiss Palatines in southern Germany and in fact far from eastern Germany. Here we can also see how left-wing terrorism of young misled people and right-wing neo-Nazism all emerge into one single thing when one follows the river back to its source, Switzerland. Swaziland and the Octagon Templars. And when we follow River Nile even further, well, you got it. In 2001, the other great eminence of Octagon Switzerland, Hans Huber Ahmed al Swissri, forced himself twice in our house, which was only a few kilometers away from where he lived himself. He came to threaten us that I should better ride against the Jews and Christoph Meili, then against Switzerland. If not, I would never see my son Myron anymore, who just got kidnapped by the Swiss. I refused and I never saw my beloved child again. S 17 years have passed now and I don't even know if he's still alive or not. The first time the Grey Eminists came, they were five and the second time six and the sixth was an Arab. All that because of an article in the Basel newspaper that I published in 1999. I already knew beforehand that any complaint like the three previous ones in France wouldn't bring anything, because through the worldwide masonry web, the Swiss octagon has all power. Freemasons getting their orders from octagons Templars in the Alps. Around this evil base, downright laws of silence and a wall of secrecy have been put up, which will be always protected by the international media and all the world's army. Yes, even soon a world army. The Swiss are organized criminals who have a country. Is fake it cui prodest? 
who profits from the terrorist attacks in Berlin, Paris, Nice, Madrid, or London? Answer, Switzerland, because it destabilizes the, by the Swiss hated European community, makes immigrants and Muslims to scapegoats, will lock down Switzerland's border and end free passage in Europe, all in the interest of a land ruled by the far right Nazi Templars. Swissy is everywhere on all key positions. Foreign Minister in England, in the US, the Defense Minister getting welfare money from the motherland. And how can you lose one million men during the Battle of Verdun in just a few months time? Didn't the generals attend officer's school? Well, Pharaoh's aristocratic octagon sent all the men both French and German to some hills in a huge forest area where all cannons, both French and German, were adjusted, adjusted to, to shoot them to pieces. Because humanity is a farmed race and the Anunnaki, in fact, Pharaoh's aristocracy. I hope that one day the world will wake up and recognize that Switzerland incarnates evil, the base of the devil.